Hey everybody, it's Luke here from LT Gaming, and welcome back to all you LT gamers and all the new Star Trek fans on the channel. Today, I'm going to take another look at the Titan A, or Enterprise G, if you're willing to accept that yet, and I'm going to take on the original Constitution class, which, of course, made famous by Captain Kirk, my favourite captain of all time. Just to set the scene for today, I am using the remastered mod. I will leave a link in the description below. We've done lots of videos on this, so you can check those out. But it is an absolutely brilliant mod that I think brings Bridge Commander right up to modern standards. So do check it out. Now, I think many of you would see this as a complete mismatch and think that the Titan A would completely destroy the Constitution class. However, I will say in the original series, it was often demonstrated that starships could be extremely vulnerable. I mean, even in Voyager, right? It was always shields down, weapons are offline. My poor dad, I used to watch Voyager with him, and he'd be going mad saying, what is the point of this ship? It literally just crumbles when anything hits it. And I think that would be the reality of combat in space. So I don't think the gap between all the different ships would be that big. However, I do understand that many of you would see this as a total mismatch, but hey, we're having fun with Star Trek Bridge Commander, and it's an interesting, hypothetical scenario to see how the ships are modelled within the game. Before we dive into some information about each of the ships, I would just like to discuss Star Trek on the channel in general, and how well we are doing. We have just had a Bridge Commander Remastered video head towards 100,000 views, which is absolutely amazing and we are very humbled and appreciate all of the support that we've got. So if you are an existing Star Trek fan on the channel, make sure to like and comment on all of the videos and if you're new here, subscribe. We're very excited about the journey we're taking and we also have a lot more planned. We have barely even touched the rest of the Star Trek games. I have Starfleet Command 1, 2 and 3. I have multiple mods, mods for Homeworld. It's going to be epic. Also, if you are watching this video externally, make sure to come onto YouTube and drop a like as that has the most powerful impact for us. Also, a quick shout out to Sci-Fi King, Transphasic Torpedo and Von Frank, modders who have made these ships possible. I will leave links to their channels below. Definitely check them out as they have done an absolutely great job of making Bridge Commander great in 2023. So let's start with the Constitution class made famous by my favourite captain of all, James T. Kirk. And in my opinion, the original Star Trek is the only one that really matters. Now I am kind of joking, but in some ways for me, the rest of it really is just all fan service. The next generation is great, Voyager's good, but the rest of it now, it's all just, I don't know, entertainment let's say. For me, the original series and the movies that came with that, that is my Star Trek. But regardless of that, the Constitution class was a heavy cruiser designed for long duration exploration and patrol missions with minimal outside support and is of course best known for the celebrated five year mission of galactic exploration and diplomacy. The vessel itself was active in various configurations between the 2240s and the 2270s. It was over 288 meters in length and grossed nearly a million tons. Now various versions throughout the years have different armaments, but the one we're playing today has phaser banks and fore and aft torpedo launchers. I personally don't think there's anything more iconic than the original Constitution as captained by Kirk, and I think even in the next generation era, it could handle itself pretty well against light vessels and destroyers. It was a powerful ship for its time. On the other side, we have the Neo Constitution class, which was designed and built by Starfleet in the late 24th century, being a direct descendant of the Constitution II class. The USS Titan A had already received an NCC commission and had already undergone a refit by the early 2400s. In 2402, the US Titan A was rechristened the Enterprise G in honor of the command crew of the USS Enterprise D stopping the Borg takeover at the Frontier Ceremony. Now, I don't technically know this yet because I haven't got to that part in Picard Season 3, but I'll throw it in there, a little spoiler for myself. Although technically an exploratory vessel, the Titan A or Neo Constitution class could handle itself pretty well with 18 phaser arrays and two photon torpedoes. 
Now the version that we're going up against today also has added quantum torpedoes. It's considered a non-canon version, but the reason the quantum torpedoes were left off it, I'm not really sure. So in this version, they're included. The defenses are pretty strong with deflector shields and metaphasic shields. So that's my brief synopsis on both ships. We're going to jump in and show the power of the Titan A against one Constitution class, and then we're going to see how many Constitutions it takes to bring down the Titan A. You may disagree with some of my synopsis about the original series and Star Trek as a whole, but I'm perfectly fine with that. We all have Star Trek in our hearts, and we have different takes on it. And look, if you disagree or you agree, stick it in the comments. I love the discussion, and I really enjoy reading all of your feedback, and I'm always open-minded and willing to change. Alright, first up today, we're going to demonstrate the power of the Titan A against one Constitution class. This is going to be fairly brutal. We're going to engage, let's close the range, and get those quantums away. Oh, that's all over already, I mean... There you go, one salvo, and the Constitution class is blown to smithereens. That shows the power of the Titan A compared to the Constitution. It's pretty impressive and a pretty big gap. Let's see how many Constitution classes it takes me to beat the Titan A. Here we go, the Constitution fleet. There's eight of us, including myself, and I found this to be the sweet spot so far. It can be a, a bit of a challenge to win. But we're going to try. We definitely have to get some firepower down. It's pretty cool watching the Constitutions engage. We have to do some damage to the Titan early, and we have to get close for our torpedoes to hit. Now, we probably have Riker and Picard over there having a whole melodrama about the situation. I definitely prefer the style of Captain Kirk, but hey, that's the modern way, right? Gotta have some drama. Okay, we've lost an ally already. We're gonna have to stay very close to her to do the damage that we need to do, which isn't ideal. We need to make every torpedo count, especially from myself. I'm gonna stay really close and claustrophobic with the Titan to do the damage that we need to do. Now, that's a good sign. I've done a decent amount of damage there. I played a battle before this, and I lost with literally a tiny bit of life left on the Titan, and it was absolutely devastating. It would have made a brilliant recording. Actually, that battle was so close, I'm just going to splice it in here to show you the ending and then get back to the main battle where I win. So you can see that it is actually a challenge, even with eight Constitution classes. It's just me and the Titan. Here we go, one-on-one. -on -one. I need those torpedoes, and I need to do some serious damage, or it's all over. Maybe I'll just collide with her and win. Oh wow, I think we're going to do it, but we're going to take a lot of damage if we don't get around. I've got hull breaches on multiple decks. I need that torpedo. I need it now. No! 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 So there we go, guys. That was me actually losing at the very last moment, which was extremely frustrating. But anyway, I wanted to show you that footage, and now we'll get back to the other battle. But I have to win, right? I have to win. And then I played another one, and I had five Constitution classes left. And I was like, that's not a good recording either. I won too easy. But generally, it's tough with eight. It is a tough challenge. You have to make sure you don't get targeted. The torpedoes are really taking their toll on her now. But we've got to do more damage. We're just not doing enough. Oh, those torpedoes from my allies have really helped. But another Constitution class is about to drop, which isn't ideal. Okay, we're doing enough damage here, I think, to take the win. Just about. Depends whether she shreds my allies, but we are hanging in there. It's not too bad. I think one more strike from myself, and she could be in a very bad position. And there we go. A pretty easy win that time for me. I've been playing this most of the morning, and that's actually the one that I'm going to use. It went pretty well. We did win. I have had battles, like I said, with eight Constitution classes where I lost on the very last Quantum Torpedo Strike from the Titan A. It was very frustrating, but it's a fun battle to play again and again, and I've enjoyed trying it. But there we go. The Constitution class can defeat the Titan A. There just needs to be eight of you. So anyway, I've really enjoyed it. 
It's been a lot of fun doing this one. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.